Okay, so in this particular video, we are going to be talking about the second type of genetic technology for this chapter, which is known as polymerase chain reaction. For the purpose of this video, because the entire sentence is a mouthful, I am just going to refer to this particular technology as PCR, because it's easier that way. Now, without wasting time, what we have to understand about PCR, what exactly is PCR? This particular technology is what happens when you take a single DNA molecule and you insert the molecule into that particular machine. You don't have to know how the machine looks like. That's the PCR machine, by the way. And when you insert this uh, DNA molecule into the PCR machine, what will happen is the machine will carry out DNA replication and amplify the number of DNA molecules. So from one DNA molecule, you can get up to about, let's say, 8.6 to 9 million DNA molecules within a short span of time. Usually, it takes about 45 minutes or so to replicate one DNA molecule to become about 9 million identical DNA molecules. You don't have to memorize the number. I'm just telling you that the idea of the PCR machine is just to amplify the number of identical DNA molecules. Now, why do we do that? We do that for the reasons of genetic engineering. If you remember, when we talked about recombinant DNA technology, we extracted the DNA from the organism and we wanted to make multiple identical copies of this particular gene. And to make identical copies of this gene, we can use PCR in order to increase the um, success of genetic engineering. We also use PCR for DNA fingerprinting. I'll explain DNA fingerprinting later. And I'm sure all of you have experienced COVID during the 2020s and 2021. Um, when you had COVID, one of the tests to confirm whether you have COVID-19 or not is the PCR test. So that PCR test is also the polymerase chain reaction test. Okay, so but for the purpose of the exam, the PCR can also be used to detect the presence of the virus in our body. So we can use PCR for a lot of things, but the main crux of PCR is just to make large copies of identical DNA molecule. Now, fundamentally, PCR is just DNA replication happening repeatedly from one DNA molecule to two, two to four, four to eight, eight to 16, and so on until it gets a large number of DNA molecules. Before we talk about the process of polymerase chain reaction in detail, I want to do a little bit of revision from chapter six of your AS when we talked about nucleic acid and protein synthesis. Because in that particular chapter, we also covered DNA replication, but that DNA replication was happening inside a cell. So this is natural DNA replication. This is artificial DNA replication right here. So just a little bit of uh, revision. I'm just drawing out the original or template DNA molecules with two strands. And the two strands are joined together through complementary base pairing, base A to T, C to G where they are connected by hydrogen bonds. And in chapter six, I told you that what happens first is the helicase enzyme will separate the DNA molecules by breaking the hydrogen bonds. And then in the cell, free DNA nucleotides will form complementary base pairing with the templates where those, those ones A will pair up with T, C will pair up with G, as per usual, so you can see that hydrogen bonds are forming between the new free DNA nucleotides and the template strand. And then after that, what exactly happens is there was the DNA polymerase, which was the enzyme that will form the phosphodiester bonds in the new strand. And if you remember, the the phosphodiester bonds will move in opposite directions, but I'm not going to go through the leading and lagging strands. You don't have to know that for this chapter. Uh, it forms the Okazaki fragments and then it had the DNA ligase. Okay, uh, We don't have to go through that in detail. But fundamentally, for DNA replication in the cell, the template strand has to be separated by breaking the hydrogen bonds. Free DNA nucleotides must form complementary base pairings with the template strand and you need the enzyme DNA polymerase 
to form the new phosphodiester bonds in the new strands. The PCR machine also carries out DNA replication, but it does it in a slightly different way. Okay, The principles are still the same. You still need to separate the strands, complementary base pairing needs to happen, and you need to form the new phosphodiester bonds. But how does the PCR machine do this? The first process of PCR is denaturation. Now think about it. The first thing you need to do is you need to separate the DNA strands by breaking the hydrogen bonds. So how does the PCR machine do this? Immediately some students will say, oh, uh, very simple, we just add the helicase enzymes to the machine. While that is a possible answer, we want to try avoid using enzymes if we could. The reason is because Using enzymes in artificial process like PCR can increase the cost. It can be quite expensive using enzymes in, in, in these artificial processes. So is there an easier way of breaking the hydrogen bonds? There is. What you just do is you heat up the DNA to about 95 degrees Celsius and the excess heat will break the hydrogen bonds and separate the DNA template strands. So that's good. I don't think you need to memorize the temperature, but you need to know the logic of heating the DNA molecule up. Uh, the reason why we heat it up is to break the hydrogen bonds. The next step is known as annealing. Now, annealing is an extra step that was not mentioned during DNA replication. I did not mention this when we were covering chapter 6, but you need to know this for PCR, by the way. Now, for PCR, the annealing step is referred to as adding something known as primers. Now, what exactly are primers? Primers are these short single nucleic acid strands. All right, you can see those single strands, the one in green in color. Don't worry, if you're colorblind, it doesn't matter. But what the primer does is, the primer, which is that short strand, will attach to the ends of the template strands. You need to know the function of the primer because they may ask this in the exam. The primers are needed to guide the DNA polymerase later to form the phosphodiester bonds in the new strand. As an example, let's say that we have two strands which are separated over here, but the two strands at the top have primers, but the two strands at the bottom do not have primers. Now, the next stage is complementary base pairing with the new DNA nucleotides. Then the next stage is the formation of the new strand using DNA polymerase. Now, the problem here is for the DNA polymerase at the bottom, they don't know from which part to attach to the DNA molecule. There's, there's no guide. Where do they start? Now, some students will say, oh, it's very simple. Just start at the top or just start at the bottom. But that's not how enzymes work. Enzymes do need a molecule that they can latch onto to begin the process. So for the DNA polymerase at the bottom, they don't know where to attach to and they cannot carry out the formation of the phosphodiester bonds. But for the DNA polymerases at the top, they have the prior primers present, the primers are those short green things, so they will automatically attach to those primers first. And once they attach to the primers, they are able to move along the DNA, the new DNA nucleotides and form the phosphodiester bonds. So the primers allow the DNA polymerase to function. So if a question asks you in the exam, what's the function of the primer? The primer is to guide the DNA polymerase when forming new strands. And the process of annealing needs to happen at 60 degrees Celsius, not 95 degrees Celsius. Because if it's still at 95 degrees Celsius, they cannot form hydrogen bonds because the temperature is too high. So the, the machine, the PCR machine needs to go down to about 60 degrees Celsius so that the primers can form complementary base pairing with the template strand. And then of course, the free DNA nucleotides will form complementary base pairing with the template strand. If you notice the word that I use here, free DNA nucleotides or DNTPs will form complementary base pairing. Now, what exactly are DNTPs? DNTPs are just basically deoxynucleoside triphosphate. Now, you don't need to memorize that full term, but deoxynucleoside triphosphates are the same thing as 
the free DNA nucleotides that are just floating around. So in the exam, if you want to say, uh, if you want to use the word free DNA nucleotides or DNTPs, it's up to you. The point of the matter is these nucleotides, um, which are these monomers, will form the complementary base pairing on the template strand, and that is elongation. But what is left, by the way, you need to form the new strands, the new phosphodiester bonds. And to form the new phosphodiester bonds, we need to use DNA polymerase. So what actually happens here is the DNA polymerase will then, they will move along the template strand and also the nucleotides and they will form the phosphodiester bonds. The thing I want you to notice here is this process happens at 72 degrees Celsius. Immediately, some students will say, some students will catch on and say, wait a second, DNA polymerase is found in human cells and they usually function best at 37 degrees Celsius. 72 degrees Celsius is too hot for DNA polymerase. So wouldn't these enzymes denature? And if they denature, they cannot carry out the function, right? But here's the interesting thing. Instead of using normal human DNA polymerase, we will use a special type of DNA polymerase called TAC polymerase. The word TAC here just stands for Thermus aquaticus, which is a type of hot spring bacteria. And the DNA polymerase is actually derived from that bacteria. And that DNA polymerase is able to withstand a much higher temperature. In fact, even at 90 degrees Celsius, it's fine. So 72 degrees Celsius is no problem for TAC polymerase because it has a higher optimum temperature and it's able to form the new phosphodiester bonds. So the steps of PCR in summary, is denaturation, where we heat up the DNA molecule to 95 degrees Celsius to break the hydrogen bonds and separate the strands, annealing at 60 degrees Celsius to add the primers, which are these short nucleic acid strands to guide the DNA polymerase, then complementary base pairings of the free DNA nucleotides, or DNTPs by the way, and then after that, using tech polymerase to make a new strand at 72 degrees Celsius. Now remember, this is one DNA molecule. And after PCR, the first cycle of PCR, we get two DNA molecules. Is that the end of PCR? No, the process needs to repeat itself, you know. So you have to heat up that DNA molecule again where you need to denature it. Because remember, the first step is denaturation. So once you reach the final step, you have to go back to the first step. You repeat it at 95 degrees Celsius. Now, when you heat up this machine at 95 degrees Celsius, do the tech polymerase denature? No, they don't denature. They are able to handle that kind of temperature. So the advantage of using tech polymerase is you can keep using tech polymerase over and over and over again without being scared that it's going to denature at any point. So why is that the advantage of using tech polymerase? When you are able to use that enzyme over and over again, it's less costly. Remember I told you much earlier, using enzymes can be quite expensive. And number two, because the machine is able to carry out this process at 95 degrees Celsius, 60 degrees Celsius, and 72 degrees Celsius, the PCR machine will generally have a higher temperature. And you know for the fact that the higher the temperature, the faster the rate of reaction. That is why the PCR cycle can go on many times, where from one DNA molecule, you can get up to 9 million DNA molecules within the span of about 45 minutes to one hour because the temperature was quite high, the rate of reaction was quite fast, and you don't have to add more enzymes every single time because you can still use the same tech polymerase for the entire cycle because the tech polymerase will not denature at high temperatures. This is the steps of PCR that you have to be aware of, by the way.